Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my reading in the New Testament in 33 Days Project, and we are on day 25. Today, we will be reading 1 Timothy through Philemon. So, a lot to get through, but some of these chapters are shorter. So it seems like a lot, but it's not really. So, with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. Yesterday was kind of a longer video because I <clears throat> made a few comments um, regarding what I was reading, but it just sort of happened that way. So, started with 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to a command of God our Savior, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, to Timotheus, genuine child in faith, grace, kindness, peace from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. According as I exhorted you to remain in Ephesus, I going on to Macedonia that you might charge certain ones not to teach any other thing, nor to give heed to fables and endless genealogies that cause questions rather the stewardship of God which is in faith. In the end of the charge is love out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and of unhypocritical faith, from which certain men, having served, turn aside to vain discourse, willing to be teachers of law, not understanding either the things they say nor concerning what they confidently assert. And we have known that the law is good, if anyone may use it lawfully, having known this, that law is not set for righteous men, but for lawless and insubordinate persons, ungodly and sinners, impious and profane, murderers of fathers and murderers of mother mothers, manslayers, whoremongers, homosexuals, enslavers, liars, purged persons, and if there be any other thing that is adverse to sound doctrine, According to the good news of the glory of the blessed God, with which I was entrusted, and I give thanks to him who enabled me, Christ Jesus our Lord, that he reckoned me steadfast, having put me to the ministry, who before was speaking slander and persecuting and insulting, but I found kindness because, being ignorant, I did it in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord exceedingly abounded with faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. The word is steadfast and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am first. But because of this I found kindness that Jesus Christ might first show forth all long suffering in me for a pattern of those about to believe on him to continuous life and to the king of the ages the incorruptible invisible only wise god is honor and glory through the ages of the ages amen i commit to you this charge child timotheus according to the prophecies that went before are new that you may war in them to the good warfare having faith and a good conscience which some having thrust away made shipwreck concerning the faith of whom are harmonious and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they might be instructed not to speak evil. Chapter 2 I exhort, then, first of all, there be made supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all piety and gravity, for this is right and acceptable before God our Savior, who wills all men to be saved and to come to the full knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, also one mediator of God in men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony in its own times, in regard to which I was set a preacher and apostle. Truth I say in Christ, I do not lie, a teacher of nations, in faith and truth. I intend, therefore, that men pray in every place, lifting up holy hands apart from anger and deliberation, also the women in like manner, in orderly apparel, to adorn themselves with modesty and sobriety, not in braided hair or gold or pearls or clothing of great price, but which becomes women professing godly piety through good works. 
Let a woman learn in quietness and all subjection. I do not allow a woman to teach nor to rule a husband, but to be in quietness. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, having been deceived, came into transgression. And she will be saved through the childbearing, if they remain in faith and love and sanctification with sobriety. Chapter 3 the word is steadfast. If anyone longs for overseership, he desires a right work. It is required, therefore, the overseer to be blameless, a husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, respectable, a friend of strangers, apt to teach, not given to wine, not a striker, but gentle, not contentious, not a lover of money, leading his own house well, having children in subjection with all dignity. And if anyone has not known how to lead his own house, how will he take care of an assembly of God? Not a new convert, lest having been puffed up he may fall to a judgment of the devil. And it is required of him also to have a good testimony from those outside, that he may not fall into reproach and a snare of the devil. Servants in like manner, dignified, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not given to shameful gain, having the secret of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, then let them minister, being unblameable. Women, in like manner, dignified, not false accusers, vigilant, faithful in all things. Servants, let them be husbands of one wife, leading the children well in their own houses. For those who ministered well acquired a good step to themselves, and much boldness and faith that is in Christ Jesus. I write to you these things, hoping to come to you soon, and if I delay that you may know how it is required to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is an assembly of the living God, a pillar and foundation of the truth, and confessedly that great is the secret of piety who was revealed in flesh, declared righteous in the spirit, seen by messengers, preached among nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Chapter 4 the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and teachings of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, being seared in their own conscience, forbidding to marry, to abstain from meats that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those believing and acknowledging the truth, because every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be rejected with thanksgiving being received, for it is sanctified through the word of God in intercession. Placing these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ, being nourished by the words of the faith and of the good teaching which you followed after, but reject the profane and old woman's fables and exercise yourself to piety, for boldly exercise is to li little profit, bodily, excuse me, bodily exercise is little profit, but piety is profitable to all things having promise of the life that is now that now is and of that which is coming the word is steadfast and worthy of all acceptance For this we both labor and are reproached because we hope on a living god who is savior of all men especially of those believing charge these things and teach let no one despise your youth but become a pattern for those believing in word in behavior, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, until I come, give heed to the reading, to the exhortation, to the teaching. Do not be careless in the gift in you that was given you through prophecy, with laying on of the hands of the eldership. Be careful of these things. Be in these things that your advancement may be evident in all things. Take heed to yourself and to the teaching. Remain in them, for doing this thing you will save both yourself and those hearing you. Chapter 5 You may not rebuke an elder, but exhort him as a father, younger persons as brothers, aged women as mothers, younger ones as sisters, and all purity. Honor widows who are really widows, and if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety to their own house and to give back a repayment to the parents, for this is right and acceptable before God. And she who is really a widow and desolate has hoped on God, 
and remains in the supplications and in the prayers night and day, which she given to luxury while living has died, and charge these things that they may be blameless. And if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of the household, he has denied the faith, and he is worse than an unbeliever. A widow, do not let her be enrolled under sixty years of age, having been a wife of one husband. He testified in good works, if she brought up children, if she entertained strangers, if she washed holy one's feet, if she re relieved those in tribulation, if she followed after every good work, and be refusing younger widows, for when they may re revel against the Christ, they wish to marry, having judgment, because they cast away the first faith, and also at the same time they learn to be idle, going around the houses and not only idle, but also tattlers and busy buddies speaking things they should not i intend therefore younger ones to marry to bear children to be mistress of the house to give no occasion of, to the opposer of reviling for some already turned aside after satan if any believing man or believing woman has widows let them relieve them and do not let the assembly be burdened that it may relive relieve those who are really widows let them the well-leading elders be counted worthy of double honor especially those laboring in word and teaching for the writing says you will not muzzle an ox treading out and worthy is the workman of his reward do not receive an accusation against an elder except on two or three witnesses reprove those sinning before all that others may also have fear i totally testify before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the chosen messengers that you may keep these things without per prejudging doing nothing by partiality be quickly laying hands on no one nor be having fellowship with the sins of others be keeping yourselves pure no longer be drinking water but be using a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent sick sicknesses the sins of a certain men are evident beforehand, leading before to judgment, but some also they follow after. In like manner, their right works are also evident beforehand, and those that are otherwise are not able to be hid. Chapter 6 As many as are servants endure a yoke, let them reckon their own masters worthy of all honor, that evil may not be spoken of the name of God and the the teaching and those having believing masters do not let them slight them because they are brothers but rather let them serve because they are steadfast and beloved who are partaking of the benefit be teaching and exhorting these things if anyone be teaching otherwise and does not consent to sound words those of our Lord Jesus Christ into the teaching according to piety he is proud knowing nothing but unhealthy about questions and word striving out which of which come envy strife slanders evil surmisings wranglings of men wholly corrupted in mind and destitute of the truth opposing the piety to be gained depart from such but it is great gain the piety with contentment for we brought nothing into the world because neither are we able to carry anything out but having food and raiment with these will suffice ourselves, and those intending to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many desires, foolish and hurtful, that sink men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all the evils, which certain ones longing for went astray from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, piety, faith, love, endurance, meekness be striving the good strife of the faith be laying hold on the continuous life to which you also were called and to profess the right profession before many witnesses i charge you before god who is making all things alive and of christ jesus who testified the right profession before pontius pilate that you keep the command unspotted unblameable until the appearing of our lord jesus christ which he will show in his own times the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, having immortality alone, dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no one of men saw nor is able to see, to whom is honor and perpetual might. Amen. Charge those rich in the present age not to be high-minded, 
nor to hope in the uncertainty of riches, but in the living God, who is giving to us all things richly for enjoyment, to do good, to be rich in good works, to be ready to impart, willing to communicate, treasuring up to themselves a right foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on it, that which is truly life. O Timotheus, guard the thing entrusted, avoiding the profane vain words and opposition of the falsely named knowledge, which certain ones professing swerved concerning the faith. The grace is with you. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, through the will of God, according to a promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timotheus, beloved child, grace, kindness, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am thankful to God, whom I serve from progenitors in a pure conscience, that I unceasingly have remembrance concerning you in my supplications night and day, desiring to see you greatly, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy, taking remembrance of the unhypocritical faith that is in you, that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that also in you, for which cause I remind you to stir up the gift of God that is in you through the putting on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Therefore you may not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but you suffer evil along with the good news according to the power of God, who saved us and called with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose in grace, that was given to us in Christ Jesus before the times of the ages. It was made visible now through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who indeed abolished death and enlightened life and immortality through the good news to which I was placed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of nations, for which cause these things I also suffer, but I am not ashamed, for I have known in whom I have believed and have been persuaded that he is able to guard that which I have committed to him to that day. Hold the pattern of sound words which you heard from me in faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. Guard the good thing committed through the Holy Spirit that is dwelling in us. You have known this, and they turned from me all those in Asia, of whom are Philegus and Hermongenus. May the Lord give kindness to the house of Honest Forest, because he refreshed me many times and was not ashamed of my chain. But being in Rome, he sought me very diligently and found me. May the Lord give to him to find kindness from the Lord in that day. And you very well know how much he ministered in Ephesus. Chapter 2 You therefore, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you heard from me through many witnesses. Be committing these things to steadfast men who will also be sufficient to teach others. You therefore suffer evil as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier entangles himself with the affairs of life, that he may not please him who has enlisted him. And if anyone also may strive, he is not crowned, except he may strive lawfully. It is first necessary for the laboring farmer to partake in the, of the fruits. Be concerning what things I say, for the Lord gives to you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ raised unto the dead of the seed of David according to my good news, in which I suffer evil to bonds as an evildoer. But the word of God has not been bound. Because of this I endure all things, because of the chosen ones, that they also may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with perpetual glory. The word is steadfast, for if we die together, we will also live together. If we endure together, we will also reign together. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are not steadfast, he remains steadfast. He is not able to deny himself. Remind them of these things testifying fully before the Lord, not to strive about words to nothing. Not to strive about words to nothing profitable but to the subversion of those hearing. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A 
workman not ashamed, straightly cutting the word of truth. In uh, the KJV, it's rightly dividing the word of truth. I think I like the KJV better. This is one of my one of many of my favorite verses, 2 Timothy 2.15, and um, I just like it better in the KJV. Uh, it's study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman not ashamed, straightly, or rightly dividing, instead of straightly cutting, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, KJV does it better, I feel like. Rightly dividing. I mean, because that's what you have to do. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. And be diligent? That's okay, but I like study better. Study. We must study the word. We must be in the word every day. We must study the word. And um, I think it's in a Psalms where it says to write... Yeah, I believe it's Psalms. David wrote a psalm saying to write down onto your tables, uh, tables of your heart. So basically keeping scripture in your heart and your mind. Um, and you can only do that by getting into the word every day and memorizing things. So point is, I think that uh, the KJV does this verse way more justice. Study to show thyself. Proved unto God, workmen, need not be ashamed. Straightly, instead of straightly cutting, rightly dividing. I mean, see the difference there? Rightly dividing, straightly cutting, the word of truth. See, that doesn't really make sense. Straightly cutting. So, I uh, I do prefer the KJV over this. So, anyway. 2 Timothy 2.16 And stand aloof from the profane vain talkings, for they will advance to mere impiety, and their word will have pasture as gangrene, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who swerved concerning the truth, saying the resurrection to have already been, and overthrows the faith of some. Sure, nevertheless, the foundation of God has stood, having the seal. The Lord has known those who are his, and let him not depart from unrighteousness. Everyone who is naming the name of Christ. And in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If then anyone may cleanse himself from these, he will be a vessel to honor, sanctified and profitable to the master, having been prepared to every good work, and flee the youthful lusts and pure righteousness, faith, love, peace with those calling on the Lord out of a pure heart, and be avoiding the foolish and uninstructed questions, having known that they beget strife, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, apt to teach, patient under evil, instructing those opposing in meekness, if perhaps God may give them conversion to an acknowledging of the truth, and they may awake out of the devil's snare, having been caught by him at his will. Chapter 3 And I know this, that in the last days there will come perilous times, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, slanderous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unkind, without natural affection, implacable, false accusers, without control, barbaric, not lovers of those who are good, traitors, reckless, lofty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of piety but having denied its power, and be turning away from these, for these are those coming into the houses and leading captive the weak women, loaded with sins, led away with manifold diseases, desires, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Yeah, this, these verses here perfectly represent our society today, probably even more so than any time period. I mean, all these, all these words he just named. That's today's society. It's so backwards. Everything that's good is bad and bad is good. And, you know, everything is just all topsy-twisty-turvy and backwards. Sad. So. Verse 8. And even as Janus and Jambres stood against Moses, so these also stand against the truth. 
men corrupted in mind, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will not advance any further, for their folly will be evident to all, as theirs also became. And you have followed after my teaching, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, endurance, the persecutions, the afflictions that befall me in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and the Lord delivered me out of all, and all who will live piously in Christ Jesus will also be persecuted. Yep, that's true. What group of people are being persecuted more so than any other? Well, there's a couple different groups, but one of them is Christians. True Christians. Followers of Christ. Nowadays, the word Christian has lost almost all its meaning. Almost all these different denominations and and religions say that they're Christian, quote unquote. That's why sometimes I say true followers of Christ. Followers of Christ. Is that what is what a Christian is? And some of these people claiming to be Christians are not following what Christ does and what he teaches. So I don't know why they call themselves Christians. But uh, true Christians are being persecuted more so than anybody else. And evil men and impostors will advance to the worse, leading astray and being led astray. And you remain in the things which you learned and were entrusted with, having known from whom you learned. And because you have known the holy writings from infancy, which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. Every writing is God breathed. Here's another good, good verse. Every writing. I think in the KJV it says all scripture. Every writing is God breathed and profitable for teaching, for conviction, for correction, for instruction that is in righteousness, that the man of God may be fitted, having been completed for every good work. Chapter 4 I fully testify then before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is about to judge the living and dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be earnest in season. Out of season, convict, rebuke, exhort, and all long suffering and teaching, for there will be a season when they will not endure the sound teaching, but they will heap up teachers according to their own desires, having an itching ear, and indeed they will turn away from the hearing of tr the truth, and they will be turned aside to the fables. But you, watch in all things, suffer evil, do the work of one proclaiming good news. Make full assurance of your ministry, for I am already being poured out, and the time of my release has arrived. I have striven the good strife, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. From now on there is laid up for me the garland of righteousness that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me in that day, and not only to me, but also to all those loving his appearing. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas forsook me, having loved the present age, and went on to Thessalonica. Krakens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Lucas is with me, having taken Mark, bring him with you, for he is profitable to me for ministry. And I sent Tychicus to Ephesus, coming, bring the cloak that I left in Troas with Carpus, and the scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil, may the Lord repay to him according to his works, of whom also beware. For he has greatly stood against our words. No one stood with me in my first defense, but all forsook me. May it not be reckoned to them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, that the preaching might be fully assured through me, and all the nations might hear, and was freed out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will free me from every evil work, and will save me to his heavenly kingdom, to whom is the glory through the ages of the ages. Amen. Greet Prissa and Aquilus and Anaphrasaurus household. Erastus remained in Corinth, and I left Trophimus, alien in Miletus. Be diligent to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, and Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all their brothers. The Lord Jesus Christ is with your spirit. The grace is with you. Amen. Next up we have Titus. 
Titus, chapter 1. All a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of the chosen ones of God and an acknowledging of truth that is according to piety, on hope of continuous life which God who does not lie promised before times of ages, and he revealed his word in his own times in preaching which I was entrusted with, according to a charge of God our Savior, to Titus, true child according to a common faith. Grace, kindness, peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause I left you in Crete, that you may arrange the things lacking, and may set elders down in every city, as I appointed to you. If anyone is blameless, the husband of one wife, having believing children, not under accusation of riotous living, or insubordinate, for it is required of the overseer to be blameless as God's steward, not self-pleased, nor prone to anger, not given to wine, not an abuser, not given to shameful gain, but a lover of strangers, a lover of the good, sober-minded, righteous, holy, self-controlled, holding according to the teaching, to the steadfast word, that he may also be able to exhort in sound, te uh, sound teaching, and to give in Convince the deniers, convict, excuse me. For there are many both insubordinate, vain talkers, and mind deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be covered, who overturn whole households, teaching what things it should not, for the sake of shameful gain. A certain one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans, always liars, evil beasts, lazy bellies, this testimony is true for which cause convict them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commands of men, turning themselves away from the truth. All things indeed are pure to the pure, and nothing is pure to the defiled and steadfast. But even the mind and the conscience of them is defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny him by their works, being abominable and disobedient and disapproved to every good work. Chapter 2 But you, speak what is suitable according to the sound teaching. Elders are to be temperate, dignified, sober, sound in faith, in the love, in the endurance, age women in like manner, in behavior as becomes sacred persons, not false accusers, not enslaved to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may make the young women sober-minded to be lovers of their husbands, lovers of their children, sober, pure, keepers of their own houses, good, subject to their own husbands, that evil may not be spoken of the word of God. The younger men, in like manner, exhort them to be sober-minded, Concerning all things, present yourselves as a pattern of good works. In the teaching with uncorruptedness, dignity, sound discourse that is blameless, so that he who is of the contrary may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say concerning you. Servants are to be subject to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not contradicting, not stealing, but showing all good steadfastness, that the teaching of God, our Savior, they may adorn in all things. For the saving grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying the impiety and the worldly desires we may live soberly and righteously and piously in the present age, waiting for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might ransom us all from all lawlessness and might purify to himself a special people, zealous of good works, Speak these things and exhort and convict with all authority. Let no one despise you. Chapter 3 Remind them to be subject to principalities and authorities, to obey rule, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no one, not to be quarrelsome, gentle, showing all meekness to all men, for we also were once thoughtless, disobedient, led astray, serving manifold desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, odious, hating one another, and when the kindness and love to men of God our Savior appeared, not by works that are in righteousness that we did, but according to his kindness, he saved us through a bathing of regeneration and a renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he poured on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been declared righteous by his grace, we may become heirs according to the hope of continuous life. 
The word is steadfast, and concerning these things I in intend you to affirm fully that they may be thoughtful, to be leading in good works, who have been, who have believed God. These are the good and profitable things to men, but stand away from foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Reject a heretical man after a first and second admonition, having known that he has been subverted who is such and sins being self-condemned. When I will send Artemis to you or Tychicus, be diligent to come to me in Nicopolis. For I have determined to winter there. Diligently send forth Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way, that nothing to them may be lacking. And let them learn ours also to be leading in good works to the necessar <coughs> necessary uses, that they may not be unfruitful. All those with me greet you. Greet those cherishing us in faith. The grace is with you all. Amen to that. Grace is with us all. Okay, next up is Philemon, chapter 1. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy is the brother, to Philemon, our beloved and fellow worker, and Apphia, the beloved, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the assembly in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God, always making mention of you in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, that you have in the Lord Jesus and toward all the holy ones, that the fellowship of your faith may become working in the full knowledge of every good thing that is in you toward Christ Jesus. For we have much joy and comfort in your love, because the yearnings of the holy ones have been much refreshed through you, brother. For this reason, having in Christ much boldness to command you that which is fit, because of the love I rather plead, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I beg you concerning my child, whom I begot in my bonds, Onesimus, who once was to you unprofitable, and now is profitable to me and to you, whom I sent again to you, he who is my own heart, whom I intended to retain to myself, that in your behalf he might minister to me the bonds of the good news. But apart from your mind I willed, to do nothing, so that your good deed may not be as of necessity, but of willingness. For perhaps because of this he is departed for an hour, that you may have in him continuously, no longer as a servant, but above a servant, a beloved brother, especially to me, and how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If then you have fellowship with me, receive him as me, and if he did hurt to you, or owes anything, charge this to me. I, Paul, wrote with my hand, I will repay. Besides that, I may not say that you also owe to me yourself. Yes, brother, I may have profit of you in the Lord. Refresh my yearnings in the Lord. I wrote to you, having been confident in your obedience, having known that you will also do above what I may say, and at the same time also prepare for me a lodging. For I hope that through your prayers I will be granted to you, if Ephorus greets you, my fellow captive in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristocrus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow workmen, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with your spirit. Amen. And amen. Okay, so we, we read 1 Timothy through Philemon. So tomorrow, guys, we're going to start uh, Hebrews. So... Thanks so much for watching and listening. I hope you all have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, Tots off for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him. Have trust in him. Wait upon him and you'll never be sorry. Like I said, tomorrow we will start Hebrews. We'll have two days of Hebrews. So we'll see you tomorrow. God willingly. Thanks again and take care.